Hi there, it's Rob from Octopus. Today we're going to walk through our new Kubernetes feature set as we've recently added first class support for Kubernetes deployments. This was done by updating our infrastructure area to add support to deploy to Kubernetes clusters. And we've added rich steps to make it easier to automate your Kubernetes deployments. Our support is all about making Kubernetes deployments easier to grok as we try to balance the benefits of this platform with its complexity. We're trying to give you the power, but also make it easy to use. Give you the best of both worlds. Now, let's get started. This is the application we're trying to deploy, and it's called the Octopet Shop. It's an e-commerce website where you can buy pet and pet related products. This website is built using Microsoft's ASP.NET Core 2.1 web application framework and it's running in Amazon Web Services on Windows Virtual Machine. This project is structured with a main website for the styles and presentation, and the core logic is built into several services. Depending on your perspective, they could be considered microservices or simply independent web services. Each component is developed and managed separately. In addition to the front-end website, we have a product service that returns all product-related information and a shopping cart service that manages the cart and accepts purchases. This generally runs great, except when we have big sales and customers flood our website and try to purchase items. The product service works great thanks to caching. However, our shopping cart service fails because we can't scale our infrastructure appropriately. We started looking at Kubernetes with a goal of greatly improving our reliability and scalability. We're starting a trial where we're going to migrate our shopping cart service to Kubernetes as the first step in our team's migration to containers. In this video, we'll look at how this affects our deployment process and how Octopus helps make it easy for our team to start adopting Kubernetes. So now let's dive into Octopus. As you can see, I have three projects related to the Octopus Pet Shop. One project is for the main website itself, and there's two service projects as well. You can see that we've already done some deployments, and this is because we have an operational website, and each project is independently versioned and deployed. Now let's take a look at our infrastructure. As you can see, we have two environments, staging and production. And if we take a look at those, you can see that we're set up for our existing infrastructure, which is our Windows virtual machines running in AWS, as well as our new infrastructure, which is two new Kubernetes clusters running on Google's cloud platform. If we take a look at our staging cluster, we can see how easy it is to add Kubernetes support alongside our existing infrastructure. Now there's two key bits of information that I had to add to be able to connect to my Kubernetes cluster. The first is my account details so that I can authenticate with the cluster. And the second bit is to specify my cluster URL and my Kubernetes namespace, if that matters to me. The other thing I'd like to point out is that I'm using Octopus's built-in certificate support. So I've selected certificate here. If I do go to our library and our certificates area, you can see I've added two certificates here that I just downloaded from Google's cloud platform. So I'll close this down and now I'm going to jump over to our projects. So I'm not going to go through all our projects in detail, but if we take a quick look at the Octopus Pet Shop project. Now, this is our main website and it has a single step in its deployment process, which is to deploy a website that's been packaged to IIS running on one of our virtual machines. So that one's stock standard. If I jump over to one of our services, I'll start with a product service first. We look at our deployment process. You can see it's quite standard. We are updating our database, which just executes a SQL script against our database, and we're deploying our web service. This deploys our packaged service to IIS running on a Windows VM. Now we're gonna take a look at our shopping cart service. And this one is more interesting and we're going to take a deeper look at it. Our project overview looks a little bit different. And if we jump to our deployment process, we can understand why. Now the next two steps both deploy our service to infrastructure. The first one to IIS and the second one to Kubernetes. And if we look carefully, we can see these two little channel markers. 
Channels are a feature that enable us to iterate on our deployment process. They allow us to customize our deployment process steps, lifecycle, and variables for a specific purpose. Generally, this is for feature or hotfix branches. But in my case, I'm simply updating my deployment process to start my team's adoption of Kubernetes. When I create a release, I can pick the channel that works for me or simply go with a default. In this case, I can start testing my migration to Kubernetes without affecting the existing deployment to IIS. Now, I'm not going to take a look at the deploy service to IIS step as this is a very common, very stock standard step. Um, what I do want to look at is the deploy service to Kubernetes as this is using our deploy containers to Kubernetes step. As a part of this release, we've added a number of new steps to give you the power you need when you're deploying to Kubernetes. So if I just filter for Kubernetes here, you can see we have a number of new steps. These steps give you the power that you need to interact with the cube control command line interface, a rich step to deploy containers, or specific resource steps, depending on your needs. But in this case, we're just gonna go back and we're going to take a look at our deploy service to Kubernetes step. Our deploy containers to Kubernetes step is our flagship step that simplifies Kubernetes deployments. Doing this by hand is by writing YAML configuration files. This reminds me of a tweet that I saw by Justin Palmer on writing YAML. And so he's using a combination square to ensure his YAML configuration file is indented properly. And this is humorous, it's a really good joke, but large YAML files can become difficult to work with. So Octopus offers rich steps to make this easier, but we also have those other steps to give you the power to customize things when it makes sense for you. So this step is going to be run on all of our infrastructure with the Kubernetes tag. And if we remember back, we have a staging cluster and a production cluster. And the work is gonna be done using workers or worker pools. And if you're not familiar with this, check the description below for a link to another video that leverages this feature. Now I've given my deployment a name and I've picked my deployment strategy. So Octopus out of the box comes with three rich deployment strategies. The first, which is to recreate deployments, removes the old one and creates a new one. The next one is to do a rolling update, which deploys a new version and removes it one by one by one. And the final one, which is probably the richest, which helps with zero downtime deployments, which is to create a new deployment alongside the old one. And when it's running successfully, switch over for zero downtime. Now, I'm not using any volumes here, but I have added a container and this is my shopping cart service. Now, one of the most important parts is the containers that you add. So in my case, I've added a single container which runs my shopping cart service. So I pre-configured this and I'll point out here, there are a lot of options and this is just part of the flexibility of the Kubernetes platform. Now, I've only configured the details that are important to me, but if we take a quick scroll through, there's a lot of options there. But as time goes on and as you move to production, you can add the configuration details that make sense for you. So in my case, I've added my image details, I configured my ports and set my container type. So my container is purely just a package or a, an image on Docker Hub. This is the port that will be running within the container. And then later on, I configure a service which exposes it to the public and we'll see that shortly. And that's pretty much it for my container. So now that we've looked at a deployment, I'm going to look at the features. And again, I'm going to only use the ones that are important to me. So in this case, I don't need the ingress feature. I'm just going to use the service. So I'll just select that. It changes the options available now, and it's now more specific to my needs. Now we're gonna move on and configure our service. The service is the endpoint that will connect to publicly. And so you can see here, I've just given it a name and I'm specifying the service type. In this case, I want a load balancer in front of the service. So essentially it will round robin all the requests through to all the nodes that I'm working with. The final thing we're going to configure is just our networking. We want to specify which ports are used and how. If we take a look at this, we can see this target port, that's port 80, that's the one that I specify within my container. And then the port itself, that 8082 is what will be exposed uh, on my public endpoint. 
So now we're ready to go forward and create our first release. So from our project overview, we can see that we haven't created any releases on our Kubernetes channel. So let's go ahead and do that. By clicking the create release button, it is pre-selecting the channel for us. So it's selecting the proper Kubernetes channel. If we look at our packages here, we can see it's picking up the latest version of our shopping cart service, which will contain our database script. But it's picking up our Docker image from Docker Hub and it's version 1.0, which is one we've had published there. Now I'll just add a quick release note. I can then review the deployment, everything looks good. So I'm going to now deploy to staging. So our deployment was successful, which is fantastic. Now, if I head over to the Google Cloud platform and take a look at the Kubernetes engine, I can see I have my two clusters, there's Pet Shop, Staging, and Prod. But if we head over to Services, and I'll just filter for the Pet Shop. Now we can see our brand new shopping cart service, and it has been deployed. Now I can copy this endpoint URL with the port, head back to Octopus, jump over to Octopus Pet Shop, and update our shopping cart service base URL. I currently have a value that's unscoped, so it applies to staging in production. So I want to change the existing value to scope it just to production. And I'm going to add a new value, which will just work for my staging environment. So I'll just add that, click staging, and then click save. So now I'm just going to quickly create a new release. So I'm going to use the latest version of my package. And just as a release note, I'm just going to say, click save. And now I'm going to deploy to staging. Everything looks good. Let's click deploy. So that was successful as well. So now let's head over to our pet shop in staging. So this has come up great. We can see the correct version, version 1.020 is running in staging. Now, if I try and add one of the pets to my shopping cart, this is now interacting with our brand new service running in Kubernetes. My next steps from here are thorough testing and then preparing the production Kubernetes cluster to ensure it meets my team's requirements, including reviewing security, monitoring and scalability then I can easily promote to production. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Links for all the resources used in this video are in the description below, including a link to start a free trial of Octopus Deploy. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel as we're adding new videos weekly. Happy deployments.